All righty. Finally, remember to do that. You're welcome, Tom. Welcome to the, what month is this? March meeting of the Hampton Road Ship Mall Society. First announcement off the bat, we do not have uh, a terribly good microphone and we don't have any speaker, uh, museum supplied like in the ceiling speaker because that system is out. Uh, last month, Gene brought his little Bose speaker with a line out connection and we had all the booming sound we could want. We don't have that today, so we're just relying on what this device puts out, which isn't a whole heck of a lot. Therefore, I'm going to ask you guys to um, keep the side chatter to a minimum so that we can hear what's being said online. You have all oh. the volumes all the way up. Um, so, I don't know if it affects the microphone, but the speaker and or. Yeah. With, uh, that's something I didn't check last time. Make sure everything was all the way up. Yeah, yeah. all the way up. Okay. All right. Sure. Um, Uh, guess someone just walk in. I don't recognize. How you doing? Hi. Uh, sorry, I'm late. Uh, Barry Seltzer. I was invited by uh, Tim Wood. Okay. Welcome. Good to have you. Oh, there you are. Uh, any, yeah. any other guests here present? I don't see any. Nope. Okay. And online, let's see who we have up there. We had one guest uh, who contacted me by email. Sign on, and then it looked like he dropped off. Uh, oh, there he is. Is it Stefan or Steven? Steven. Steven. All right, Steven. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, let us know if uh, everyone online, please let us know if the audio is it being picked up well. Like, for instance, Steven. I just stepped about eight feet away from the mic. Steven what? Uh, Sanji, sorry. S-O-N-G-Y. Uh, that was for the sake of our... Uh, our clerk who's writing down uh the minutes are you recording the meeting i am okay finally remember to do that um yeah so i like i'm now further from the mic than when i started uh, let me know if the audio dropped out because last month it was pretty but um any other guests online Mort stole from new jersey oh more okay you're such a regular that um, I keep forgetting you're a guest, but you're a welcome repeat guest. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I enjoy it. Um, okay. Guests have been acknowledged. Any additions or corrections to the minutes? No? Okay. Uh, treasurer's report. And uh, yeah, anyone in the room that wants to speak, we can. Um, you can come over to the mic or we can send the mic to you either way. Okay, the treasurer's report, uh, we started the month out with $3,714.15. I collected $186 in dues, $14.95 for a hat, and $8.75 for a name tag. Total receipts for the month were $209.70. Um, the disbursement that was made was $119.88. That was for Bluehost web hosting. And that was the only one. So we have an ending balance of $3,803.97. And our, our membership, we have 46 regular members, seven associate members, one honorary member. And we had one resignation uh, at the end of February. That's where we stand. Yeah. Do we have his address? <laughs> <laughs> That moves us on to the webmaster's report. Um, webmaster needs his reading glasses. <clears throat> so let's see um one thing i added if you were at the ipms show in richmond you saw this um and later on during show and tell i'll show you the lap, uh, club's new laptop because no one's seen it yet before we all paid for it a couple months ago and 
I want to make sure everyone saw it, make sure I just hadn't taken the money and run. Uh, I took that to the IPMS show and propped it up as a display and added this gallery page. So it used to be that the models link here on our website. Everyone's seeing the, uh, well, yeah, they are, okay. Um, we just show our models. Uh, this view is what you would see. Uh, so it would just be a, a scrolling list of the models and then you can filter by various things, who built it, what countries the ship from, et cetera. I added this gallery. Um, so it's a good in general for someone online to just casually browse through once it loads. It takes the featured image for each model page automatically and scrolls through them. Uh, six seconds for each one, I guess, like that. So it's a good static display. We can prop this up at a conference, like at the IPMS thing or in um, any other public setting that we're at. The model booth, if the person happens to have a laptop with them, they can go to this page and, and set this up. And if you click on the picture, it will take you to the model page for that boat. And then if you click back, it'll go back to the gallery. So that's one thing I did. Uh, another thing, internet. so um, I was going through old minutes, looking for notes I scribbled on the paper, and I ran across a shop note. Uh, is it, um, Sean Maloon had brought in these wax pencils so he was using to pick things up. I call, he called them rhinestone pencils. That's a helpful little tool because sometimes you try and pick up something with tweezers and as you pinch it, if it's small, it just kind of flies across the room. Something sticky like a wax pencil would be quite handy. I thought that was a good idea, but it didn't seem worthy of having um, a shop note all to itself. So under the shop notes, um, there's a section for tools. And under here, we have an old presentation done by Bob Comet long ago that I uploaded. And I just added a note here that there's an addendum at the end for various suggestions made at monthly meetings that aren't substantial enough to have their own note. So down here, I started this. So now whenever you have a, a tiny little suggestion that doesn't merit its own page, I'll just add it to the end of this tool thing. Um, and then you, I mentioned it in the logbook. Oops, wrong button. So I'd mentioned this tapering jig. I used that for my Portuguese model and I found a new use for it. So I added uh, information about use number two here at the end. I thought I had. Well, forget that. It's not here. <clears throat> Looking through the post, it said this, but it updated. Apparently, I updated it for something else. So ignore what I just said. And then uh, if you log in as the administrator, um, I won't bother doing it. There's a help page that has information for whoever's doing the admin of the website. Say if I got hit by a bus tomorrow, there'd be some instructions. I updated those instructions. I hope I don't get hit by the bus though. Um, that's it for the webmaster's report, which brings us on to old business. Um, I intend to do a lot more than I actually do. <laughs> right before these meetings. Uh, one of them was to come up with a, a questionnaire related to us holding an exhibit or a conference. I attended the IPMS show along with a bunch of you uh, a week or two ago. And it was a lot of fun. It made me want to, for us to do something of our own even more than I already did. It's been brought up a few times. And I do like a show of hands who's interested, but it's kind of hard to gauge the interest and I can't remember who raised their hand. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is send out a questionnaire. Who's interested in 
um, doing an exhibit, which means all you're doing is showing the models. There's no competition, there's no round tables, no speakers. Or who would rather hold a competition, which it means we're having judging, but we're not doing uh, we're not having uh, conferences or roundtables. Who wants to have a full blown conference? Uh, so, like all of the above, you know, showing your models, having them judged, holding roundtables, having speakers. Clearly, from the first thing to the last, it gets more and more complicated and takes more and more effort. So, it's a matter of the questionnaire will be who's interested in doing these and then who's going to help participate in the organization and running of it. Um, so that's forthcoming. So um, I won't bother with trying to get a show of hands now. We'll do it in a format that's easier to collect the information later. Model shop tools. Um, so we were voted and we're all set to buy some stuff. And then some people, uh, museum staff, wandered through and exclaim that we are making way too much dust and all these tools have to go and it looks too cluttered. We need to clean it up. The second thing I agree with, we can certainly keep it more organized than we have been. The first part I didn't necessarily agree with. And later we got a different viewpoint from the guy who's in charge, Lyles Forbes. He was not concerned about the current level of dust at all. He said he's heard no complaints from the staff that does the cleaning of the model areas, exhibit areas, uh, and that we are by no means required to purchase a dust collection system. If we want to, we're also not prohibited <coughs> from purchasing a dust collection system. So if we think it's to our own benefit, we can do that. He also said he didn't want the big red bandsaw back in the room. And again, I intend to do more things than I actually do. I intended to ask him if we he cared whether we had a smaller bandsaw. I will do that in the coming weeks, days, hopefully not weeks, and figure out if we can buy the Proxon saw that we already approved. It's about half, well, so I wrote it down. It's uh, 19 inches high compared to the 29 inches of the red bandsaw and 11 inches wide compared to the 13 inches wide of the red bandsaw. It did say 29, not 39. Yeah, 29 here. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, the fact that it's smaller and brand new and looks more, I don't know. It's more modelish. Yeah, uh, it looks has cleaner. It looks a little less dangerous. And, and uh, the other one looks like something from one of those robot wars or whatever. Um, hopefully, right. that'll go through. Yep. Right. Yep. Is it a safety issue? No. The band, the I don't think so. I think he just thought it looked like way too large an industrial thing for the, our small model shop. I think that would be, but we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll find out when we speak to them. Just yeah. don't paint it red. Just don't, don't paint, paint it, red, it yeah. red, bring attention to it. Right. Um, the last thing on my list is all of the drawings that were donated to us. I brought some in as samples. I think it was the January meeting. A couple people wrote to me, said they were interested in getting copies um, made or taking the drawings. I haven't followed up on those inquiries. I hope if, if anyone else uh, is just becoming aware of these drawings, they're at my house. You can come look at them anytime. I'm not going to, it's like uh, an entire car load. So I can't bring them in every meeting to see who wants what. There's a listing online. You see something you like, come to my house. I'm only three miles from the museum. So if you can make it here, you can make it to my house. Um, and then after a while, I'm going to have to figure out something to do with them because they've taken up too much space. I'm going to contact the museum, see if they're interested. Don't think they'll be interested in much of it, if any of it at all. And at that point, I have to figure out what to do with them. What's that? Sneak them at your house? <laughs> yeah. You, you, you can take the whole lot. That's fine. Um, uh, I have a brand new uh, fire pit in the backyard. <laughs> I, I don't want to do that, especially not the, uh, I don't know what happens when you try and burn mylar. It probably makes a big smelly mess. Um, all right, that's all my whole business. Anything uh, anyone else wants to bring on the table? Yep. I've uh, got third order forms here. Anybody wants to order shirts and hats with the new logo, your 50th anniversary. Just to let them know 
the shirts on back order. We estimate up headroom. So, uh, yeah, see me if you want them. All right. So, here's a test. Did everyone just hear Tim fine because he's 15 feet from the microphone? No. Nope. Uh, uh, my shirt order forms here if anybody wants to order shirts or hats with the uh, 50 year logo on them so if you do get with me fill out the form email me or whatever and, or send me a check made out to julie's my address is in the log online so or just call me or shoot me a text message and we'll we'll get, we'll get it in for you thank you okay i presume that worked okay yep all right the reason I ask is uh, the microphone was closer to him, but the microphone was further from the computer. So there's the Bluetooth signal to worry about as well. Any other old business? All right, great. Like short meetings. How about new business? New business is I'm collecting dues. I'm in the process of collecting dues. Uh, I've had quite a few people who have already paid. I did send an email out. Uh, I'm, I'm taking online payments for those that uh, like like that function. Uh, it's uh, it, it works very well. Uh, it's PayPal, Venmo, and Zelle. And of course, I'll take uh, cash and checks. Uh, but uh, yeah, the dues are due uh, in the March meeting for the bylaws. So just thought I'd pass that on. <laughs> Thank you, Ryland. Any other new business? If you owe dues, you will be getting an email from me. If you don't get an email, that means you're paid up because I had a lot of people who paid up uh, for several years uh, uh, last year. So it, uh, so really, if you owe dues, either check with me if you're unsure or if you don't get an email, you don't owe the dues. Probably anywhere within four feet is probably good for that, so we don't have to use it like a microphone. I think I did that as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a COVID issue if you hold it too close to your mouth. Um, all right, it sounds like we've wrapped up business quickly today, which is good. Show and tell time. Who wants to go first? Who wants to go before or after Dean? Legal question. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and go then. No one else is jumping. Let me switch the camera. Oh, um, uh, so there is the new laptop I was speaking of. <clears throat> And in front of it is my Portuguese drifter. Not Portuguese, Danish. Portugal was the previous model. I got some pictures to share. Um, so give me a moment while I open up. All right, so I'm building a model of a, a Danish eel drifter, and there are two original uh, boats at a museum in Denmark that I visited while I was there. Uh, one's called Victoria and one is called Dan. This is my host, um, and he is pointing out a particular feature of the construction of the boat. These um, laps are called uh, Well, the uh, doubler plates, uh, we call them butt laps or something like that. Anyway, um, you can see that they're, they're fastened with copper rivets and they're quite prominent. And going back to John's presentation last month about compelling impressions, um, if you have in the scale of the model you're working at, you need to put in the detail that's appropriate for that scale. So he showed, uh, 
a wooden model. I can't remember which one it was, but the trinals were the trunnels were way too big. And he said that detracted from the model. But if you leave them off entirely, then it also looks a bit, you know, under detailed. So I had a question about, you know, I wanted to have these rivets shown because I thought that uh, if I didn't, they would be noticeably lacking. Um, They're, they're clearly visible to the naked eye on the on the boat. Um, why is okay? Um, so this is on the inside. The um, copper rivets uh, are copper nails that go through from the outside and then through a conical washer, and then they snip off the end of the nail and take a hammer and pound the end of the hammer until the end of the copper nail deforms over the washer, forming a rivet. The rivets are 19 millimeters on the actual boat, so it's scale. Um, I can't remember now. <clears throat> and then the nails on the outside, I had to decide whether or not to show those. <clears throat> sometimes you have a rounded head nail, sometimes you have a flat head nail. This is Victoria. She has round head nails. You can see them quite clearly. But this is Dan, and this, I didn't get as good a picture of Dan, but. Um, see that the nail heads are flat. You can't really see them at all. You kind of barely make them out here. So I had a decision to make which way to do it. And I kind of thought it'd be more interesting if you could see that texture than not. So I'm trying to do round headed nails. There's a, this is not the boat that I'm modeling, but there's two more at the same museum. You can see typical construction there. But the nail heads are quite prominent. So that's what I was trying to do. And there's another one where they're flat. You can't really make them out. So, you know, you can tell me, uh, I won't be offended that I, are they, do they look too large or appropriate? My measurements say that these are actually a little bit undersized. So I don't think on the inside, this is the inside of it. So the double plate on the inside. I think they look good, right? But on the outside, they are a little bit, maybe too large. Uh, this is the same joint, uh, this is the double, Double plate on the inside. That's what it looks like on the outside. Uh, I'll mention that in a second. Um, and normally, what what oh, yeah. distance would you normally view that from, and a real one, and actually see it? How close would you have to get to see those rivets on the real one? That's what I was trying to show here. Is that I mean, I'm standing yeah. quite a ways away. You can see those quite quite plainly. Once you put a coat of paint on it, though, yeah, probably yeah. looks about right. Well, and I was limited to, you know, the what size copper wire is available. Yeah, that's real good. So these are a little bit undersized and these are a little bit oversized. These are just going through the thickness of two planks. These are being driven into the keel and the wire is soft enough. I didn't find out until after I'd done it, but just pushing the wire into the wood requires enough force to actually flatten it out more. So you, these look bigger than those, but it's the same, same wire. Oh well. The rivets look great. It's yeah. that wood you chose. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you know it is what it is. And and they stick up a little bit too proud, but I can sand them down. So it is a that's the keel and uh, at the stern end. Uh, is that so penny five that, inches wide? Is that, is that penny five inches wide? Yeah, yeah, it's not jeans penny, no. <laughs> um I went through did you say something in the past about just looking at a number 80 bit and it breaks? Oh, yeah. These uh, are these, uh, 79s, and I went through about five of them trying to get that in. I just the slightest bit of side pressure and it snapped. Um, so you can see here, I, they look like they're sticking up too much right now. I'll just hit it with the file or some sandpaper and, and flatten them down a bit. But that's what I've been up to. Um, so, I, I forget my. I have to make them flat again. I do. Um, so I meant to preload this. I wonder. I don't want to take too much time. That's all of my pictures. I'm gonna see if I can how quickly I can get back to this. Um, did I save anything online already? I, I didn't preload the video that I got this. Um,
this tip from, I think I put a link in here. I'm going to look real quick. That's the boat that I'm working on. And yeah. I have to share the screen again. I think I stopped sharing. Um, that's up there. All right, what's going on? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm trying to share a web page, and when I share the screen, I'm not seeing it come up on the on our monitor here on the on the wall. Um, so what you just one. drilled a hole and stuck the bar through there um, and tried to mash down on both sides with a pair of pliers or something? Or what? Uh so there's a really damn it hole. All right. Can you just stop sharing? Would I, would I accept stop sharing and restart? Guys, stop And maybe I end the slideshow. That was lost. Okay. Maybe that was the problem. Kill the uh, kill the slideshow that I was showing. Maybe now it'll work. Yep, here we go. All right, so I got on the model ship world. I have uh, from one of our auctions some nails that were about the perfect size to simulate the roads on the inside of the hull, and the shank of the nails was just about right to be the nail head if I didn't care about it being rounded. If I just wanted to you know, file them flat. But there wasn't enough to finish the model. And I also, I couldn't find that size nail anywhere. So I got on model ship old and started asking questions. Of course, everyone that replied, replied, well, how about this product, which was a nail three times the size of what I wanted. And I told them in there what size I was looking for. It's like people don't read, bent over. Uh, end of rant. Uh, and then somebody else suggested this thing, um, which is pretty cool. So. And this is short, so it's not like a full on you know, presentation. Let me pause this just for a second. So in here, he's going to suggest using a butter knife. And I did that at first, but the handle of the butter knife was deeper than the blade and getting away. And so I just decided to do the same thing on the end of my uh, six inch graphing roll. So the, the nail head ends up being just barely thicker than the wire. So it's not um, so it's the nail head not helpful if you actually want to use the tank of the nail. Not helpful if you just enough that as you're pushing it into the wood, it's just wide enough to stop it. So 
So you can see he's got that old butter knife. I did the same thing on the back of my dresser. But there was um, model motor cars stuff. Um, something has rivets that were exactly what I needed. Um, I think that size. That size was $8.50. And my model's going to have something like 1000 plus. So that would have been like $200 least worth of nails. Um, and I decided to keep about it. Do it this way. So again, no okay. question is, um, for, for your model scale, and you include this, what's too big, or if you include it, then um, I thought it would look like it was missing if I didn't include them. The challenge was to them without it being too large. Um, Uh, so that's, that was the hard part of this is that I wanted to show from the nail to nail side. Um, if I just wanted to use flat ones, I could just stick a piece of wire on there and just it off. So I had to do each nail that we have. So I fill the holes in the plane and uh, stick it through a little bit of loop. Off the back side, same thing. I'll be the inside of one plank, and where that I do the same thing on the outside of the other plank, smaller one. And then so the planks are only 36,000 inches thick, but all the length of the that in there. Um, so it's a bit of um, <laughs> So I mean, I um I didn't think wood glue would be appropriate. I'm using some high glue it's supposed to hold metal to wood better than you know, uh, the alphabetic resin glue. But it gets re it's really thick and stringy, so it makes a mess. But the good thing is it also um, falls up kind of like rubber cement as it dries, so it's easy to scrape it away. It doesn't you know soak into the wood and stain it. So it's easy to clean up. It works seems to work. And then. When I put the wood glue between the planks, there's at least a little bit of something um, holding it on. You can see in that guy's presentation, he had a, it looked like, I couldn't tell if it was 111 degrees. 111 degrees is, would be oddly very specific, Ugh. oddly specific. I think maybe it was like a Roman numeral three to a reference that he didn't include. So I don't know if that's too blunt or, or too thin, but it seems to work. Um, Anyway, that's it. Uh, I'm done with show and tell. Sorry if that dragged on too long. Uh, mm. right. Who's next? All right, I guess I'll go. Everybody here all right? Yeah, it's just a... Yeah, well. All right, I brought, I brought my model of this um, uh, Japanese submarine I uh, 53, where they converted towards the end of the war to um, put the, uh, what do they call them, the Kai 10, the suicide submarines that they were trying to use towards the end of the war, which is basically a, a torpedo with a, with a, a pilot. Um, I don't think they had very much success with it. They may have been able to hit one ship towards the end of war with these. But um, the model is 172 scale from Lindbergh. It's actually kind of a, <laughs> um, a crappy model. So there's a lot of work that was involved trying to get it this way. Um, 
in the end, it, it turned out all right. I had to uh, do a little um, making of some stuff of my own, like the tie downs for all the submarines. I made all those and I had to make uh, one of these because the part was missing out of the box. Um, and just basically the paintwork, um, but a lot of sanding and stuff to get it this way because um, it, it's basically uh, does not fit well at all. So if you decide you're going to build it, it can be a nice looking model once it's done, but you got to work at it. So I'll say that. Um, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll display it with pride at my house once I get back home with it. And it just fits in the back seat of my vehicle. So I can tell you right now, I, I hesitated bringing it because I didn't feel it was going to fit in my truck. But uh, once you put it in there, it takes up the whole back seat. So <clears throat> anyway, there you go. Oh, I put um, I put my Type Seven German submarine in there, and you know it's it's kind of um odd when you look at uh because I built the American submarine and the German Type Seven, and of course that and they're all in seventy two scale, and that's the largest of the three right there. Um, it's amazing. I think that one had a crew of like a hundred and seven. Versus the German submarines was like 53 to 56. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the American submarines only carried like 79. So, um, but uh, it is quite a large, large boat. <clears throat> so, there it is. Yes, it is. Shall we know? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Well, to start off, I want to congratulate Rylan and uh, and uh, Marty for taking home some prizes from the show a couple of weeks ago. Stuart also. Yeah, Stuart's not. Where is Stuart? He's, He's not here today. Camera. Oh, is he up there? Hey, Stuart. Where are you? He's not up there. Yeah, keep looking. Oh, there you are. Well, congratulations to you too. They took. Uh, uh, I think Rylan and uh, Stuart uh, won uh, first and second in the wood category. And Marty, you took a couple of... I took second for the Type 7 uh, German submarine and third for my uh, little DE, uh, the USS England. Oh, okay. I presume everyone can hear. All right. The little boats you see down here are some of the patterns. I had them at the, uh, at the show. Uh, they weren't complete, uh, but these, this represents one, two, three, four, eight, eight out of the 11 different boats that the Olympia had on it, uh, and 18 total boats on board. And these are the patterns that I've developed for different uh, of the, the different uh, boats, uh, launches, cutters, and so forth. And from this, I will then make a uh, rubber mold and cast them up. So uh, that's what these are. These are the patterns. And I tried an experiment just to see how well I could cast hollow because I want to do all the interiors on the boat. These are sort of, sort of uh, intermediary, intermediary practice ones that didn't turn out well. But you can see I can cast them fairly thin wall. So I'll be able to build the whole interior of each of the 18 boats. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but in addition, if you want to turn the camera, on, um, I had a side project I wanted to do, and uh, it involved uh, modifying an Arizona kit that uh, Trumpeter manufactures to its configuration from 1940s uh, down to its original configuration in 1916, and it started out. Uh, I had a, uh, a uh, an upgrade kit uh, that I purchased for this that had wood decks, and I scanned the wood deck 
uh, into the computer. And this represents the, the original scan. And you can see a lot of the protrusions, cutoffs for how the ship uh, was configured in 1940. Well, to do that and take it back to 1916, a lot of the uh, superstructures were removed, uh, catapults, things like that. So I brought this into Photoshop and was then able to clean up the deck considerably. Uh, this drawing here just represents the same deck with the drawings of the superstructures and so forth as it represented in 1916. So this is kind of a, another side project. I, ever seem to be happy enough just working on one thing at a time. So, so as the glue dries on one thing, I can pivot to the other. So this is a, a project which uh, I think uh, Bill and I had discussed doing some years ago. I had originally built one of the uh, cage masks as a concept to see if I could pull it off. And it seemed to turn out fairly well. So I, I think I'll continue with this and see uh, where it takes me. So essentially it's the trumpeter kit and just disassembled completely and redone, reimagined as a 1916 version of the uh, Arizona. That's all I got. And another query from the crowd. Did audio, that audio get picked up okay? Just gauging the distance from the microphone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah, sounded good. Sounded good. I don't know. It could have been. Yep. Oh, hey, uh, right. I saw you come in and forgot. Um, hey, everybody. Good morning. Um, I just. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, it, yeah. it's, that's fine. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say good morning. And of course, I'm here for the Battle of Hampton Roads uh, commemorative. This is Beth Keaton, by the way. Um, hey. And I can. Uh, Oh, I really don't need that. <laughs> um, I wanted you to know Dave called me this morning, Baker, who's in the model um, shop on um, in the booth on Saturdays, and because of the weather, he's not here. So if anyone is interested in being in the model um, stand today, it is open, just to let you know. That's all I was going to say, and to say good morning. Hope y'all are doing well. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> You've been to at least three meetings, so anytime you want to join, you let us know. I've seen my boat, but I'm worried about the order. So. I got the boat, great cash. I love the boat. <laughs> yeah, because we're close to the cash board. <laughs> um, I love the board. It's, uh, see, I see a chat here, so someone I'm going to tell you. I'm sitting at the go. It's kind of a problem. Evan uh, All right. Um, any other show and tell? All right, we'll take a 10 minute or so bio break and come back for a presentation. Oh,